On this channel, we talk a lot about using lines as a way to take an inspiration piece and make something that's totally your own. Being able to put your own spin on an inspiration is a really great skill, so you're not just copying someone else's cards. But I think that maybe an even better skill to develop is for each of us to be our own inspiration. Let me show you how to do that. Step one is to choose an item from your stash of crafty goodies, just one. Today I'm choosing this Defined Petals Layering Stencil Set. A couple of weeks ago, this one was on its way to the de-stash pile, mostly because I hadn't used it, and when I looked at it, I just couldn't think of a way that I wanted to use it. But then, you may remember, I used it to make this card. I used all four layers in the set, just the way it was intended. And just by working with it that one time, all of a sudden, a million possibilities opened up and I couldn't wait to get back to it to see what else I could do. So trying it out not only helps you familiarize yourself with it, but it also gets your brain working and thinking about what to do next. The next step is to try and push beyond what was originally intended, but just a little bit. With this stencil set, what that meant to me was to leave out a layer or two and see what I got. Well, really, I knew that if I did just the background layer, I would end up with white flowers on a dark background. I used three different shades of green to add some interest to the small background areas between the flowers, and now maybe I have a field of daisies if I add yellow centers to the flowers. But I decided to make them into poinsettias by moving on to the flower layer and just adding some coral shading to the ends of the petals. The neat thing about this flower pattern is that by putting down the pink ink in the center of each flower, I was actually blending onto both ends of each petal, because each petal actually belongs to two flowers. I think that's kind of cool. Still, this doesn't have to be a Christmas card, but that extra color has really added some dimension to the petals. I trimmed this panel down with a large circle die, and rather than make just one card with it, I thought I could cut the circle in half and make two. It's not always easy to find the exact half of a circle, and I figured out this quick hack a while ago. I cut the same size circle from a thin paper. It's easy to fold this in half and then lay that on the back of the stenciled circle and draw in the half circle line. Then I just lined it up on my little trimmer and now I get two cards. To finish these, I created a panel of the do, -si -do color with my ink pad and I trimmed it down to a square and the leftover strip. I popped up the half circles on the left side and I stamped the first one with an old Avery L set and for the second one, I used a Waffle Flower Joy die cut. I had to glue the J directly onto the half circle panel and then put foam tape behind the rest to keep it all level. So there's some ideas for getting slightly different looks using the same supplies. Next, I used just the flower stencil, and this time I'm making more traditional poinsettias in red. But even then, I prefer my red to have some variations and interest, so I blended red through everything, but leaving lighter and darker spots. Then I came in with some Fleur de Fuchsia to give me some more darker areas. And finally, I cleaned off the stencil and then blended some Tiki Torch over the panel in spots to lighten up some areas and also add some warmth. See how pretty they look against the white background? But you don't have to finish here. Sure, I used a different layer of the set, but another way to push the item you're working with is to look around at what else you've got and come up with some interesting combinations. To add to the graphic feel of these flowers, I got out the dotted swirl stencil from Gina K Designs. Now this one is meant to be turned to the stencil builder tool, and I'll link a video here where I did that. But just because the stencil is designed to be turned doesn't mean you have to turn it. I added some sangria ink through, and because I put that flower stencil back in place, I don't have to worry about getting any dots in between the flowers. I just kind of placed them so that the curve of the dots matched up with the curve of the petals. To finish this card, I added a gold scrapbook.com sentiment, along with some dot embellishments and a thin frame to really just let the pattern take center stage. Next, I'm going back to the white flower on dark background idea, this time with Juniper Misting. I've been using the little pegs on the stamp and stencil tool to line up the layers of the stencils, and I'm super impressed with how easy it is to get perfect placement with no gaps between the flowers in the background. But the truth is, you can line them up yourself pretty easily. I'll show you that in a second. So now I wanted to add colorful little petals in the white areas. And I don't have a stencil with that shape that fits. So I created my own stencil with some acetate and a little dye. The acetate is clear, of course, so I can see where I'm placing each little inner petal. And my original intention was that I would use six colors 
since each flower has six petals. But as I worked, I remembered that each petal belongs to two flowers. So I ended up using only three colors. And I really liked the result. But by pushing this just a little further and using a darker shade of ink on only half of each little colored area, wait till you see what that does. I added a piece of tape to the acetate stencil to allow me to still be able to see what I was doing. But this time I'm only adding that darker shade to half. See how dimensional these look? This is one of my favorite tricks and you've probably seen me do it before. Now one thing I don't love about this stencil is the placement of the flowers. I wish they had one in the center with the pattern moving out from there because then when I trimmed it down I could make the full single flower kind of the focal point. So to finish this card I had to choose something else and I cut a circle from the area between three of the flowers to have my sentiment there. I used an old Avriel birthday sentiment that fits perfectly into a circle and I stamped it with navy ink. Next I decided to take matters into my own hands and make a full flower into a focal point. And I did that by masking around one of the flowers and putting some catching rays ink through. Then I went back and I did the dimension trick with my sauna ink by using the edge of a piece of acetate as my mask along with a piece of masking tape just to make sure I didn't get any sauna into the areas I didn't want it. Now that's pretty but wait. I picked up the whole stencil and I turned it and lined it up so that the petals are offset. And then I just repeated the whole process with the catching rays ink through all the petals and then I came back in with the acetate and the sauna ink to do those half petals. Now I think that's pretty cool. It has an elegant, almost zodiac type look with those curves. Now I was so in love with the previous card with the navy and the primary colors that I wanted to add those colors into this one. And that's gonna completely change the look of this. I grabbed a stencil that has a small circle. This one's called Mid-Century Jackson Balls, I think, from A Colorful Life Designs. I masked off one of the dots and then I put the red and blue ink through. I wanted to do the half mask dimension trick, but I was running out of brain power by now. And I was having a hard time seeing where to put the tape to do the masking so that the lines would all point into the center. So I just took the easy option and left it with one color. I trimmed this one with a circle die and I finished it with a navy background panel that I had blended tone on tone with one of the layers. So there's yet another look with these stencils. I added just a small sentiment to try not to distract from the design. This is my favorite kind of card to make. No one looked at this stencil and thought this card would be the result. Okay, and now here's where I went too far. I had this idea of using a pattern stencil over the whole panel, and I started with some light-handed blue ink through the flower layer. Then I put the library texture stencil over top and I went a little heavier with the blue. This is a pretty start, although I wasn't 100% in love with it. And that's okay, that's part of experimenting. Then I put the stencil back on over top, I lined up the pattern as well as I could with the blue, and I did a heavier layer of green through that. Hmm. Maybe the colors are too close to each other. I really wanted more definition of the petals. So I put the flower stencil back in place, and by now I'm not using the pegs or even a corner. It's really that easy to line these up. And I blended a little more blue just around the edges of each petal. That gave more definition, but I still didn't love it. I thought back to the dark background I did earlier and I put one here and I liked that better. And then I added some more shading to the petals. Not bad, but honestly at this point I was out of steam, out of patience and I just let it go. I didn't make a card out of this one. Do you think I did the wrong thing? Do you see potential here? Let me know in the comments below. So can you really be your own inspiration? I know you can. Choose an item and use it just the way it was meant. Then try it again with one small change. And then again, try making it with another small change. And then maybe start making more than one change at a time. Try combining this product with other favorites in your craft room. And just keep your mind and your imagination open. You'll be amazed at what you can come up with. There's still a lot more possibilities with this set. I didn't use those stripe layers and I didn't use it with my gel plate or with paste or anything more than just dates. These six petal flowers are screaming to be a backdrop for some snowflakes and my list is getting longer and longer again. Let me know what you're going to choose as your starting point. And if you do try this process out, share your cards and tag me because I'd love to see them. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.